Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know we have people from all around the world, from uh, Asia, Africa, North South America, Europe. So wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, welcome to Harassis' uh, extraordinary meeting today. And uh, my name is uh, Neeraj Sharan. I'm the chairman and CEO of Aura Incorporated, and I'm your moderator for today's panel. You know, I've done this uh, for many years with Harassis, 12 years, but uh, the privilege I've had today is truly I am among stars, the sports stars. Today is the first time. So I feel very honored and privileged because it's a different set of people. Uh, and I really believe that your grid, uh, your your focus, your courage, your passion is unparalleled. So salutation first to these sports people and you. You guys are the real heroes. And uh, so that's why it's a very good privilege. Uh, as we share today, I will have a very quick introduction. I'll start with our introduction for each one of you. And uh, after that, we will take up uh, questions. I'll ask you a few questions about certain things on the thought process. And we will end that with a message to everybody. And if there is time permitting and we have some questions from the audience, we can take it. So uh, since two of us are here, I'll start with uh, G. Milka Singh. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, Jim Milka Singh has been uh, India's probably the first professional golfer who made it to the European Tour in 1998, has won many European Tour awards. He's been conferred a very high Padma Shri uh, award uh, uh, title by the government of India, and 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 you have a very unique uh, legacy. I don't know of too many families in the world. Well, it runs into two generations. Your father, Milka Singh Ji, was one of the fastest sprinter in India. And your mother was also the captain of the volleyball team. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll have a good conversation later. And, and this, uh, Yankee Suleiman. Uh, it's uh, 60th. By the way, today is uh, Nigeria's 60th Independence Day. So we wish you. Happy uh, Independence Day. Happy Independence Day. It's a good day for you to speak yes. about your country and what you yeah. Thank you very much. And, uh, she has been the executive director of the African Center for Youth Sports and Development, a, a very grassroots development organization. She also serves as the regional director of the uh, Africa Sports Venture. And she's been a champion for sports at the grassroots levels and feels very passionately how... Africa can do so much more. Nigeria, Africa, all of it can do so much more in the arena of sports. Uh, when we have other people coming in, I'll, I'll interrupt and go back to them and start to uh, join uh, and, and, and introduce them as, as, as much as it is. You know, uh, today we have about 900 people on this uh, event including the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, at least about seven prime ministers of different countries, business people, entrepreneurs, academia, courts, all around the world. Uh, we have a great galaxy of people. And the, and the topmost thing in their mind is, obviously, about globalization, the future, and so on and so forth. And here we are in our sports panel, which, which actually, to me, says very clearly that uh, in this world of globalization, sports can be a very strong social cohesion, you know, that, that can bind the world around the world. So yeah. I wish uh, a lot of deliberations goes out in the industry for what we talk here, because we are talking some very core virtues here. So uh, I'll first start with you. Uh, uh, G. Milka Singh, uh, as I said, uh, your family exemplified uh, sports consciousness. Uh, your father started, uh, he came to India just after the partition of India and you know, Pakistan. And when there was almost nothing here, the country was also struggling to find its roots. And, and, and today, you and your dad, the whole family, uh, have done so well, uh, apart from being conferred the Padma Shri uh, by the government of India, you're affluent people, you've done well in life, got a great family, and, and you are truly representing a new progressive India. 
much different than what it was. Uh, how did this happen, if I may ask you this question? Well, um, let me first begin by uh, stating this, uh, Neo G. I'm really delighted to be part of this panel. Um, and uh, with uh, such accomplishments and uh, inspiring people, um, and uh, I would like to go back to your question that uh, obviously my father, when he started his life, uh, where he started from was very difficult. Uh, during partition times, uh, uh, he saw his parents uh, slaughtered and then he had to fend for himself. And then he came to India uh, and uh, joined the army and the only thing that saved him and gave him courage and uh, you can say end of the tunnel the light he saw was sport and he became an athlete he started running and and he was introduced to a first marathon running and then he became a sprinter and then after that uh, i think life's been great we've been fortunate enough that uh, he made a good livelihood for himself and um, god's been kind and he put me on the right track too by introducing me to the game of golf and I try to do my best, make my country proud and myself uh, happy by making a living what I love doing. Thank you so much. Uh, and at this time, I'd like to welcome Abhinav Bindra. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us here right now. I know you had some technical difficulties. Uh, but just a very quick, brief uh, introduction. You don't need too much introduction, but still I have to give you some introduction. You <laughs> You brought a lot of pride to the country. You've been the first and the only Indian to have won the Olympic gold medal for for shooting and, and the first uh, World Indian Championship and the Global Championship gold as well. So in some sense, you've actually broken the sporting uh, barrier and uh, you had more than 150 medals to your thing. You are uh, Government of India Arjuna Awardee, which is a high recognition. I know you run a lot of foundations and institutions to, to further sports. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, you're not that late, you're just a few minutes. And uh, so I'll get back to you in regard to the questions and some conversation. Um, I will uh, get to Yinka first, the question that she, uh, I've already introduced uh, Yinka. And you know, I'm gonna ask uh, Yinka about the thing is, you believe in youth sports. And, and the development strategies of youth sports. Uh, what are the challenges and opportunities as you see, not just in Nigeria, but the world? And then I'll get back to you, Abhinav, with your question, and I'll move back again. Um, thank you very much. I am really, really very delighted to be here, and I, I'm very, very passionate about sports. I, I started out as a uh, as an athlete, I I am involved in I was involved in track and field. I had very high hopes for um, going professional in track and field, but then I come from an environment where um, development of sports we have a natural ability to produce talents, but the environment is not very conducive for those talents to try. So for most people who are into sports. They've actually, for them to try, a lot of, many times they have to actually take their trade abroad to get the opportunity to try. So for me, I was one of those few people who didn't get, I tried, but it didn't work out for me. And then uh, one day, while I was very frustrated, I was still very young then, yeah? one of my uncles said, you can forget about sports. Go and focus more on education, because even in sports generally, um, maybe one out of a million people make it in sports, but if you go into education, you can always navigate your way into professional life. I was very disappointed I, because I was really very good, but then I decided that, okay, I would actually focus on school. I enrolled in the university and I continued. I studied communication. I continued, but the passion never left. The interest was still there and... My I, Even as a communications professional, I decided to set up a magazine on golf. I don't play golf, but I love all sports. Now, while playing golf, uh, while writing on golf, I also took a very deliberate interest in junior golf development. 
And I found out that, uh, well, gold is not, it's a sport in Nigeria, but it's very, very elitist. Um, there's really zero interest in development of gold. There's a lot of investment. There were at that time, they, at that time, investments were actually coming into Nigeria, but then it was not channeled at development of golf as a sport, but more or less like golf as a recreational activity for a particular class of people. So while trying to do that, well, okay, while writing, I was not very much interested in what I was writing about because I was just doing image laundry for a particular group of people. So. Um, we came up, we actually decided that, okay, my team and I said, okay, let's focus on the development of youth, of golf. But then the challenges that golf had was what was affecting all other sports in Nigeria. Um, there was really no, you know, the, there was no interest. We didn't, there was no interest or value. We had this general misperception about the value of sports. Um, the general misperception is that, you know, we just go into sports to win. It's about just winning. It's not just about participation. And the value of sports is in engagement and participation. It doesn't matter whether you win or not. We have this do or die, win or, you know, and then because of that, we cheat. You know, we have a tendency to, to cheat because you just want to win at all costs. You cheat in how you represent talent. You cheat in, um, you che and by doing that, when when you pick a 16 year old to represent your nation in, a, in an event that is supposed to be represented by a 13 year old, you rob those 13 year old opportunities. You don't focus on the development of that sport. So that was like okay. a very major challenge in the development of sports. Then we have the issue of poor governance. The, the federations are not properly governed. We have people who didn't have the interest of their sports being in charge of this sport. Because even when trying to, you know, come up with these strategies, when in interactions with these people, they, if what we hit bottlenecks at these levels, which we are supposed to be like organizations that are supposed to support what they are doing. But then we became like a competition to them because, you know, it's, our, our agendas were not properly aligned. You know, so, so we have. I will. I will come back later on that. Other, we have more questions on the same uh, solidarity and uh, the challenges you are facing. I'll get back to you quickly on that. Let me get to Abhinav Bindra, and you know, again, uh, you've had a brilliant journey, a big influencer, not just India, all over the world. My question to you is: How did sport help shape your character over time? You know, in your life. Well. Uh Firstly, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you know, sport uh, with, with my biggest teacher in my life. Uh, and, you know, sport obviously taught me how to win, but it more importantly taught me how to lose. Uh, it taught me how to play by the rules. It taught me um, the necessity to work hard, work hard with integrity uh, and honesty. And, uh, you know, it taught me how to chase a goal. Uh, so, it, you know, it imbibed a lot of values of what I, what I stand for. Uh, I think one of the greatest things what um, I could m manage out of sport in my own personal development was, you know, I was, a, 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 I was an individual who, who always uh, struggled a lot with self-doubt. Uh, I was in a sport which was a very lonely sport. Uh, shooting is a very solitary sport. But my constant companion in my 20, year in, 20 years in sport was probably self-doubt. Uh, but, uh, you know, what I started really chasing... Um, because I couldn't really gain the self-belief, what I started chasing was self-respect. And, um, you know, I, I worked hard. I, I tried to chase my goals with what I, uh, with the values that I just listed. And with that, I earned my own self-respect. And I think that was the greatest prize of all. Uh, it shines brighter than any gold medal shine, that shines in my cabinet. And, uh, you know, that, uh, that has meant the world to me. And I'm so, so grateful that, you know, sport allowed me to achieve that. And that, to me, uh, is my greatest victory, uh, which came via sport. Thank you so much. Thank you for summarizing that. You know, your statement reminded me of that uh, Michael Jordan in the United States. He kept saying, I failed over and over again, and that's the only reason I have succeeded. So, you know, your, your whole thing is about being lonely and bad and things like that. Uh, I'll get back to G. Milka Singh. Uh, you know, we have a subject today about global solidarity and impact the sports. 
Uh, how do you see these two words of cohesion, global solidarity, impact of sport? How do you see the subject of today and your thoughts uh, on that matter? I think uh, it's very important uh, subject and I think uh, they mingle quite well because uh, it sport is what unites a lot of people and it teaches you how it gives you courage to face challenges, gives you a lot of disappointments. Disappointments, I mean by it makes you a human being which realizes that these challenges are there for me to work harder and get back to working hard. Uh, sport is an equalizer. I can talk about it teaches you to be disciplined. It teaches you to be united together. It teaches you to be uh, working towards a goal, goal setting. It gives you uh, courage to face challenges. But I can say all this, but end of the day, what it teaches you, that is the most important thing. That is belief. Belief for a human being is very important to succeed in anything he wants to do in life. So if I put all this together, uh, I think belief is the word that is going to take the nation, human being, forward in whatever they want to do in life. When you wake up in the morning, you've got to look at yourself. You've got to look at yourself saying that I'm the best thing. You've got to be positive towards yourself. Things like that, when are introduced in our culture, in our community, it goes a long way. It builds a nation. It builds a nation to be a successful nation, builds a nation to be disciplined, builds a nation with self-respect. If all that happens, I think a nation like that is going to be successful and going to be doing really well in the world. Thank you. Uh, good points. You know, and, and my... And I say this quite openly always to people that there are two set of people that are my heroes always, either if they work for the army defense forces anywhere in the world. And the second is the sports. And there is a commonality. I find always uh, the skill sets and the discipline between the two set of people I'm talking about, uh, you know, laser focus, determination, passion, self-discipline, leadership skills, and so on and so forth. Actually, I, and, I, and here's a teaser question for all of you and us. Uh, I was really looking forward for more sports people to be actually taking up training and mentorship programs for uh, the industry as well, business leaders, industry, you know, universities. And I know a lot of people are doing it uh, individually, but I, I truly believe that the entire community can, can really benefit because, you know, we get trained for this. You know, I'm a business leader. I get coached, audited. OK, tell me how to focus. Can I how do I take stress? And in today's time, everybody is stressed. And here we have skill sets in sports. And, you know, I just wish there was a ready made package. You guys could have uh, gone into, uh, you know, straight away uh, doing online. There was a platform doing it. But, you know, that's a subject for another day. Uh, Abhinav Bindraji, another question for you. You are a member of the uh, International Olympic Committee uh, Athletes Commission. Uh, and, and I know you've got, you know a lot about the pains of athletes during this COVID time. Uh, they must have gone through whatever. Can you share some uh, thoughts and lights about that right now? Yeah, I think it's, of course, been a very challenging time for the entire world. But I think for the athlete community and the Olympic athlete community, it's been very, very difficult, even more so, because, you know, the Olympic Games, as you all know, have been postponed by a year. They are now going to be held in 2021. Uh, you know, athletes have aligned their minds and their bodies uh, and their whole life and oriented towards a certain goal. And then it gets postponed um, in, in circumstances such as this. Um, it is very difficult. So I think uh, it is, of course, physically very difficult because athletes generally have very busy bodies. Uh, and, you know, during the whole time of the lockdown, I think it is uh, physically very, very difficult for them as well. But I think uh, more than anything, I think it has been mentally, which is mentally very, very uh, and, and, and tough uh, on, on the athletes. And that's where the IOC's Athletes Commission has done a lot of work in this last uh, uh, couple of months to really provide resources 
specific to mental health and uh, um, for athletes because I think one of the biggest misconceptions uh, in the world is that athletes are immune to any kind of mental health issues and you know they're very men they're mentally very strong but the reality is that you know we are human beings first um, and uh, that sometimes doesn't get acknowledged and um, this this uh, these the circumstances of the whole COVID situation has really brought, brought that to the fore. We've had a lot of stories of athletes really struggling mentally, going into showing symptoms of mental health issues, etc. Uh, so, so I think more than anything, more more than um, the physical aspect and not being able to go out there and compete and not going, not having the possibility to really train as a, as athletes normally would. I think it's been mentally a very very challenging situation but uh, hopefully the games in tokyo 2020 will be um, the silver lining and the light at the end of the tunnel and it will unite people together you know we just talked about um uh, global or, or, or the role of sport in, in, in uh, global sport in, in solidarity and i think that there is a sport uh, there's nothing in the world that it can be a better ambassador of solidarity than sports, you know. Uh, I have seen firsthand the power of sports and, and, and has the ability to unite people from all races, from all creeds and all cultures. Uh, and, you know, very, very few things in this world can match the joy and the atmosphere of, the, of people gathering in one place, watching sports from all over the world uh, to witness a competition, putting everything aside and coming together to celebrate the spirit of sport. And I do hope that uh, Tokyo 2020 will allow us uh, that possibility. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. I'm going back to Yikas. I know this is very specific to Nigeria. You know, it's a, it's a sport-loving country. And still, it is far away from where it should have been at this point in time. And, and, and so why is that happening? I mean, very quickly, why is this that even a country that is so sports loving, track and field and everything, and still not able to even get anywhere close to where it should be for Nigeria? That's where you're on the ground and that's what you're trying to do there. Yes, um, the, the, the fundamental reason for this is because we, there's really uh, that we have a misconception of the value of sports. And because of that, it is really very difficult for us to actually build on what there is no political will to um, uh, to develop. But then, um, you know, as what uh, what um, Abina was saying concerning global solidarity, um, it's very important also for the impact of sports to be felt, you know, practically in communities. Um, Nigeria is a very um, multi-ethnic. A very diverse country, and um, we have we, we, we struggle with a lot of issues issues of the um, um, political crisis, issues of um, youth restlessness, issues of um, communal, community, communal clashes. And then these issues have actually um, you know affected the peace and the development of the country. Um, poverty is very rampant, even though we have a very uh, vibrant youth population. Nigeria has one of the most vibrant, um, youth population, most youthful populations in the world. Actually, Africa has um, 19 of the world's most youthful populations in the world. So, um, when you have a, a when you are from a nation that the average age of your population is 18 years old, you know it's really um, a wonder why the court is really not, you know, a, a very um, one of the biggest industries in your nation. But then, um, you know, when you don't value, you don't see these values, it's very difficult for us. And then the impact of not having sport as a, is felt as, as a vital sector, is also felt all around the nation. Poverty, you know, sports impacts on economic development. It builds social cohesion, and very importantly, it is a very, very massive employer of labor. Nigeria is not benefiting from that impact because we don't have a viable sector. Uh, you understand? Oh. So, for me, I believe um, I believe that the challenges, the funding is not there. The but then we have the population, we have the market. If we if we decide to go into sports right now, you know, it's, it's 
And we consider the, the association of sports and other industries, um, real estate, hospitality, travel, um, tourism, healthcare. Uh, you know, you can, you can build, you can generate massive wealth to such an extent that it can, you know, change. It can, the, the youth population right now that seems like a burden to government can actually become a, a very big um, opportunity uh, or one of our greatest resources. Thank you. I think, thank you. Thank you, Yinka. I think uh, that's what we are talking about. There's so many opportunities. I'm going to flip this uh, because we're having a nice conversation and we don't have to follow any. Uh, we, are, we are two people who could not join because of, I don't know what reason, technical, one from Switzerland, one from Qatar. Uh, you know, the, the Afra, she is uh, responsible uh, on the team for FIFA 2022. And uh, Honey was in Switzerland, is in Switzerland. She, uh, um, the captain of the Palestine national football. And she's sending me a message. She's having some trouble, both of them having some trouble technically. Let me take up a question. And and this could be either by Abhinav Bindra or, or G. Mokha saying there's a question from the audience from India. Neha Vatsala saying, how as renowned athletes you suggest that we can change the mindset of individuals, governments, or our society to take sports as a career. I would love both of you to say a minute answer to this question. Uh, Jeev, you want to go in first? Okay. Um, my suggestion to this would be, um, especially for an individual, if I may start with that, uh, the most important thing for an individual is, I'm going back to what I said earlier, belief. Whatever he believes in and whatever he loves doing, he's going to give it his best. You've got to have rituals. You've got to um, also set goals for yourself and targets which you want to meet. With that, you're going to work harder and that way you're going to achieve what you want to do in life. You've got a dream and you've got to do something what you love doing. And I think not many people are that fortunate to be making a living out of what they love doing. That's very important. Talking about the government, uh, I think um, we need to educate the policymakers what needs to be done uh, for making sport as a culture in a nation setting up gyms, setting up uh, swings in public parks where people go for a walk. They can just go do whatever they want to after their walk. They should be fixed gyms so that they're not uh, dug up or taken away. Uh, like I see it in Korea and Japan all the time in most of the public parks. I see these swings for the kids and for the elderly, their gyms there. That is very important. Uh, and make it public friendly. Like I can talk about golf or I can talk about other sports where people want to go try their hand on a sport. They need to make it public friendly so that they don't have to become members. There should be more public golf courses. There should be more public driving ranges where people can go try their hand at. Tomorrow, my son or, or my uh, person who's my help at home, his son wants to try golf. There should be a public golf course where he can be given a chance to go out there and try his hand out uh, and talking about um, our society I think for our society I think it's very important to have the sporting culture ingrained because it teaches you values it teaches you discipline it teaches you uh, disappointment and disappointment gives you correction to work hard uh, to build a nation which is going to be successful where, you know, if hardships come, I'd find a way, I find a solution to make myself better and improve. So this is what I feel personally needs to be done to make a nation introduced to the, to the sport, any sport they like. And I think that builds the nation's strength, discipline, and the success comes that way. Okay, thank you. Uh, quick question to Abhinav uh, Bindra. I mean, this question and the, also that I know you've been uh, talking a lot about the 
uh, the mental wellness of athletes, you know, and, and uh, that's such an important part of it. You're a big advocate of that. Uh, what would you say on this subject to people who are looking for this mental wellness for athletes? And the fact is, how can we, how can the government or how can the young millennial in the world can actually look at sports as a career in a very serious manner? I think uh, firstly on the on on the last question, I think Jeev already answered it uh, very comprehensively. I think I'd just like to add uh, add uh, and echo the same sentiment that you know we we're all very as a country and, and as many nations are generally very obsessed with the whole aspect of sporting um, performance and winning medals at the highest levels of victory. But I think we tend to forget what the foundation of that is. For the for the, the real foundation to achieve that is really. We need more people to just go out and play sport for the sheer joy of playing sport. Uh, for society to just be involved in sport, um, not for not for winning, but just for for gaining the the great values that sport brings brings to the fore. And when that starts to happen, when more and more people uh, just on a weekend go out and play sport instead of going to the movies, when that starts to happen, that's where real change will be triggered, and that will automatically. Have a trickling effect on elite athlete performance, and we will have more people succeeding at the highest level. But the base of it is the foundation of it is um, uh, really the um, really having more people really enjoy sport and just play sport for the sheer joy of playing sport. Uh, the second aspect of what you touched upon was was mental health. I think I touched upon it already a little briefly. Um, you know, it is a misconception that. Uh, Athletes are immune to any such any any such issues, but in reality, athletes are really as vulnerable as anybody else. We're always so obsessed with just the you or the, just the performance side of the aspect that we tend to forget that athletes are human beings first. And uh, I think we need to reverse that. And I think you know I was guilty of it as well. In at some point of the time, I believed in the equation that a gold medal equals happiness. But what in reality we need to do is reverse the equation and happiness equals a gold medal. And if we really start to make human well-being and um, uh, the heart and center of, of human performance and high performance, we will have more successful people, not just athletes, but generally anybody who is seeking to perform at the highest level and anybody who is seeking excellence. Uh, so I think it is all about having the right attitude, uh, creating the right ecosystem uh, around you. Uh, I think uh, those are very important things specific to mental health. I think uh, it is a lot to do with um, education. It is a lot to do with destigmatizing it. It's still such a stigmatized sort of a subject uh, in society and in sport even even more so because you know if you if you say that you have a mental uh, issue, you are suddenly perceived to be very weak. But uh, actually, uh, it's okay not to be okay. Um, but it's just about uh, setting the right systems together. It is about uh, uh, educating not just the athlete community, but the whole ecosystem surrounding the athlete, and creating the optimum environment which fosters human well-being. And in in result, it, the result of that will be higher performance. Thank you, Abhinav. Uh, you know, it's ironic, you know, even in our uh, scriptures, because you said something about enjoying the sport, which even Jeev Milka Singh also dwelt upon. In our scriptures, even in Bhagavad Gita, it says, play to play. You should play to play. It's the karma and the journey. Forget the result. It's, uh, so I think it's a very important part. Uh, uh, the word belief, as Jeev Milka Singh says, and as you say, Abhinabindra and Inka, that, you know, you need to have the sense of enjoyment in what you're doing. That's that's a court for people to get on board. And coming to the trophy part of it, because all of you are sports icon and, and, and many times in your life you've won many awards. But there is a saying they say about this trophy is that, and, and I'm saying this in a more lighter mode, but it has a very heavy meaning as well, that um, you know, a trophy carries dust. Memories last forever. So, you know, that moment of whatever you got uh, is always in your, in your mind. Um, uh, to all three of you, maybe uh, we have about 11 minutes. I don't think we have two other people joining us because I think they have a technical issue. And, and so we will continue with our conversation. Uh, towards the end, be prepared that I might ask you to say 
uh, your message to the world on this subject as sports icon, but that will come in the last few minutes. Before that, I thought, you know, health, not just mental, but physical health as well. Uh, you know, communities, when you have these uh, life skills and learnings from sports people, all these traits that you have, you know, it, 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 it gives you leadership, it generates leaders, uh, you're, you're healthier, physical and mental, you're, you're actual, uh, you know, your actual health bills as well in the world for countries will drop significantly if people are actually taking care of themselves through the journey of sports and keeping themselves much better and, you know, obesity or whatever, whatever, whatever. And my question would be a little bit around the gender, that how can we involve more and more uh, women uh, also in the a- arena of sports? Uh, we do see a lot of that happen now. Uh, maybe, Yinka, you can say a very brief two line as to how you think women can be uh, doing that. Yeah, um, sports is actually a very important um, tool to achieve um, the sustainable development goal number five of um, um, gender gender equality and empowerment of women and girls. Um, right now, we are working to in Nigeria. We are working with UNESCO to, um, to implement the Spotlight Initiative, where we are using sports for the long-term recovery of women. Um, and girl survivors of gender-based violence. Um, sports is actually an equalizer. Sports, um, you know, you know, absence of um, school-aged girls uh, in sports denies them of opportunities for, um, for for learning, for coaching, and then it takes the, and um, because sports actually takes young people and actually girls away from negative recreation. So it is sports is actually a very important tool to empower women, to empower to empower young girls. Um, so for for us, um, because for me as an advocate for grassroots sports development, I am not really about um, winning any trophy. I, I'm just about you know getting more people active, getting more people active, um, breaking women away from um, the. Um, you know the, um, bar- the 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 things, cultural things, barriers. Yeah, breaking women away from culture perceptions that actually limit pe- women and young people from achieving their potentials. So I believe that sports is actually a very important tool. It's a very important. Um, it's a very 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 important tool. It's when people don't when women don't have access to sports, it's a danger, it's an injustice to them. You know, and they deserve quality opportunities. It's easy for me to you know, talk about sports and to think in terms of male gender. But women are equal participants and equal contributors to the development of sports. And they deserve all the opportunities that they can get to also thrive at all the levels in sports development. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Yinka. Uh, uh, another question that I have uh, coming from the audience is also about... Uh, how can sports uh, help a world uh, without discrimination and without your ethnicity and your diverse background? You know, sports is one thing that can do that. Uh, whether uh, it is an individual sport or a teamwork or, a, or a, you know, all that, how do you see that uh, go forward. I mean, I know that in today's world, coming together, uh, cutting across gender, cutting across races, background, ages, what sports does. Uh, but how do we further it more? Jimil Singh, any thoughts that you would like to say on that? Uh, uh, what I feel is that uh, sports unites people, nations. And uh, when we have sporting events like this, you, be, you could be coming from any nation. If you win an event, if you're a winner, you are congratulated by everybody else. And they respect you for what you've done. You've earned it. So that says a lot in itself when 
you are at these arenas of big championships where people come together from all over the world. That is one. And second, I think we should have these kind of events more often so that we can spread the love, spread the message and show that we are united together for the same cause. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one because I think that's very important in today's world. Even though we are talking about globalization, there are walls that keep coming up time and again. Yeah. We see walls again come up again. Every time the economy goes down, there is a wall that comes up and you need to break the barrier and yeah. sports can be a good platform to cross that and do it. Um, yeah, so uh, you, and, and as, as they say that you have to constantly work on it. Yinka, as they, you always say, uh, as one of your sports persons said, I don't know which one, that uh, you, you, you miss 100% of the shots that you've not taken. So you've got to take a shot. And, and you know, uh, one quick question for you, Jeev Milka Singh, that, you know, because you play golf, you know, when you, how do you really bring your mind and all your cognitive abilities to look at that ball with the blade of grass and the trajectory and, you know, it requires a millisecond connect and a swing. So I'm talking more of the cognitive part of it, you know, bringing together. How do you uh, help people come to that laser focus? Because that is an application in real life as well, you know, in danger, in work, in student, in, in your career, in being managing a family, all of it. So how do you do that? Um, I, I personally believe... The most powerful muscle in a human body is the brain. And I always say this, don't let the body tell the brain, but let the brain tell the body what to do. Okay, good. So what I do normally when I'm on the golf course to improve my focus, I've been doing a lot of yoga over the years. Second thing, a human body and especially me, when I want to do something, my focus is only on what my routine is. Routine could be that I have to just focus on where this ball needs to go, what my target is, where this ball needs to end up. I need to just visualize that. Visualizing that is putting good thoughts in my mind and in my subconscious to deliver that shot. So what I'm basically doing is I'm giving positive vibes to my uh body that this needs to be done. And so how do I focus on that? My focus is only on my routine. My routine is basically looking at the golf ball, taking the backswing, hitting the shot, and just doing that. And that's going to get me to my end result. Thank to you. Si to, to simplify, I'm basically trying to focus on what I want to do. I'm taking the negative energy out of my thought process. I'm only focusing on my result and my goal, nothing that's, else. And I think that makes things easier for a human being to achieve. That's a very good uh, suggestion and a very good advice to everybody. We've got like just about 60 seconds left. I must thank you all for being with us today and, you know, we, for this conversation. And I really wish that sports people around the world come together to actually join hands with each other and be a little bit more collaborative to bring about changes in the uh, young millennial, uh, take them to real careers, help them lead a better life using skill sets that sports always uh, it gives you. So, and I'm sure we look forward to your uh, participation in future, not just harasses and other events. Uh, thank you for being and joining uh, today. I am sorry about the two uh, other panelists that could not join from Qatar and, and Switzerland, Zurich, for some technical reason. But uh, thank you once again and uh, look forward to seeing you, all of you, at some point. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All the best. Bye. Bye.